Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Breaking down the latest Chelsea news on a regular basis. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Wednesday. In today's news video, Aurelian sure many links to the Monaco midfielder continue and potential serious interest for Chelsea this summer in improving our midfield going into next season. Also continued links to Raphael Varane, uh, Sam Johnston from West Bromwich Albion as a potential backup goalkeeper uh, to Edward Mendy. And uh, yeah, I also want to speak about England beating Germany, in particular the performance of Kai Havertz, which was really exciting. So I think for Chelsea fans, although Kai is now out of the Euros, um, I think it's a positive and there's tons of excitement for Kai going into next season at Stamford Bridge. But before we get into any of that good stuff today, I want to ask you guys, please hit that like button because that helps new people find the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and a notification bell so you don't miss any of my Chelsea related uploads this summer. Still covering England at the Euros, obviously, but hopefully things will start to ramp up with Chelsea now had my collab with Eunice Talks Football the first two parts of that discussion already on the channel this week got two more parts of our discussion to be uploaded uh, the rest of this week we speak about Kai Havertz and we preview uh, Chelsea's uh, new season basically um, so great discussion with Eunice as ever so please go and check out the first two parts and as well pre-season Chelsea's pre-season kicks off next week so hopefully things will ramp up I also wanted to say a massive thank you to Fanslide the world's first live in play fantasy football game fun to play free to download they're supporting all of my england content this summer they use opta stats during the game so you know it's live you can get your mates involved compete with them the way you use it very easy to use you slide players in and out of multiples during the game it's a great second screen experience i've been using it throughout the euros and not only is it free to play it's fun to play but as well there's prize money on every single game during euro 2020 up to ten thousand pounds in prize money to be won on fan slide so get down to the description box below use my unique link to download the app and get involved once you do download the app add me at son of chelsea because i'll be on there as well and on top of that uh, on my twitter currently at son of chelsea please go and follow me got a competition with fan slide to win an england mason mount shirt so definitely get on there it's my pin tweet so you can get involved in that competition as well but thank you fan slide for supporting my content this summer um let's start off with england germany of course very happy england uh, winning a massive game unfortunately no chelsea players were actually involved for England um, the, the trio of German players of course involved with Chelsea uh, were playing and all started last night for, for Germany uh, Antonio Rudiger Kai Havertz and Timo Werner uh, with different fortunes I think Kai was Germany's best player and um, this is the thing that really excites me about Kai Havertz um, generally my analysis of the Euros I'm not taking too much into next season because I think international football is so radically different but I think individually for the players I think the confidence they can gain I think is so massive and I think for Kai personally he's had a really good individual Euros in a, in a German side that haven't been at their best um, but I think what this gives you is sort of a track if you go back to say March when he came back into the team under Thomas Tuchel he's had a really good run of form and I ho really hope for Kai's sake now getting back having a I think a decent preseason under Thomas Tuchel I think he'll at least be able to take part in some of the games I think it's going to give Tuchel the time to integrate him into the team a lot more and I think what you saw for Kai last night was he wasn't playing as the number nine he was playing behind Timo Werner and but still had a massive influence on the game so I know there's a lot of concern at the moment surrounding us signing a new uh, forward if that's going to impact Kai Havertz who of course played as a number nine really successfully for Chelsea at the back end of 2021 um, but I don't think that's going to harm Kai I think Kai is such an extraordinary talent I think he's going to go from strength to strength and me and Eunice have a really interesting conversation about uh, Kai Havertz that I'll be uploading I think tomorrow about that so please stay tuned for that but let's get into the transfer news Aurelian Chouameni this guy has been linked for months uh, central midfield is one of my key areas this summer that I think Chelsea need to be strengthening I've said this before Billy Gilmore who looks very close now to be joining a Norwich on loan it appears that that deal could be done actually tomorrow because of course Billy Gilmore has been in self-isolation after uh, testing positive for COVID-19 but it feels like that deal is very very close now so I think obviously we need a midfielder. There's a lot of debate around midfielders coming back this summer. The likes of Conor Gallagher, the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Trevor Chalabar, and Ethan Ampadu. Could any of those make an impact in this area? This came from Simon Phillips in his big sort of transfer roundup. Chouameni Johnston, Kunde, Varane, Kepler, Loftus-Cheek, Giroud, Bakayoko, and Gilmore. A big sort of transfer update uh, from Simon Phillips. But I do want to give credit to Care for Youth on Saturday's news video. I think it was I referenced uh, Care for Youth and definitely why you should go and follow his page because he sort of broke this news 
last week in terms of Chelsea basically holding an interest obviously in true many um, and sort of the wheels being in motion now and apparently we're going to have a meeting with him in the coming weeks and his agent in particular and also it comes from uh, care for youth that Petr Cech admires the player a lot and apparently Petr Cech could be behind this move and it kind of reminds me a lot of last summer when you remember Petr Cech was pushing the move from Edward Mendy from Liga and you sort of think that if he could have a similar impact as Edward Mendy and sort of uh, Cech getting involved once again in transfers you know he's got a very good track record based on Mendy's uh, transformative impact for us uh, last season. I think overall too many um, people know my my like for you know Declan Rice. I think he's a really, really good midfielder as he proved uh, for England once again. But I've, I felt that too many, and as I see the links to Holland, as I see the links and sort of the, the, the belief that we're gonna sign a big striker this summer, um, that's gonna cost a lot of money. And the money that's being touted for Declan Rice, um, I just think it's unrealistic that we'd sign both for that amount of money. I mean, I may be proven wrong if we only do two signings, but I just think uh, astronomical fees for both players, Haaland and Rice, I just can't see it happening in the same window. So true many has always been sort of that B option, but I don't think a B option in, in the sense that I think you're really downgrading. I think this could be a really exciting player who isn't the finished article yet, but I think is a player that if Chelsea don't snap up soon, I think may come to regret it in the coming years because I think true many is destined to make a move to a big club sooner rather than later and hopefully that can be Chelsea. Just a little bit of background that I've covered on the channel before about Chiumeni. He really has an interesting development as a midfielder. You know, at Bordeaux, he was much more of a, a deep line playmaker in a 4-3-3. But under Niko Kovac, he really has developed into more and, and coming closer to what you'd consider to be a defensive midfielder. Breaking up play, but also having a progressive element to his game. Uh, Scouted Football, which is a really good uh, site, but also a great uh, magazine that you could definitely, the handbook, you can definitely go and buy. Has a really good pro profile on Aurelien and many it gives you so much insight on his game so if you want to learn more about him definitely go and get scouted football and as well just generally to learn more about young players across Europe and across uh, world football really good uh, magazine to get uh, what they did say during their piece just a little bit here the timing and strength of his tackles is superb this is reflected in his defensive output with his 6.1 tackles and interceptions per 90 ranking him in the 99th percentile of all midfielders in Europe's top five leagues uh, true many has experience playing in a double six for Monaco I also want to obviously bring up Cesc Fabregas here who has lots of praise for Aurelien Tchouameni of course playing alongside him at Monaco and the influence that I'm sure I'm sure someone like Cesc could have on him as a player as a midfielder if you watch Tchouameni he's not just a defensive midfielder he does add that progressive side to his game I think we've absolutely lacked the profile of a player like Nemanja Matic since we let him go um, that's not to say that I think that I'd still have Matic in the team but I think that you know we just haven't replaced his profile of midfield Fielder. And I think something that gets forgotten about Matic is in his final season for Chelsea, he was incredible in terms of creative numbers for a player of his profile for Chelsea. Um, I think he had something upwards of like 12 assists that season for Chelsea. Um, everyone remembers, of course, the pile driver against Spurs in the FA Cup semi-final. But him and Kante as the double six in uh, Antonio Conte's 3-4-3 was truly wonderful. And that's what Chelsea need. They need at times we can be a little bit, and I'm primarily thinking about smaller games within the season, which Chelsea need to radically improve next year if we want to win the Premier League title and, and seriously compete. It's not only in terms of having an elite finisher up there. I also think at times it's about being a lot more daring with our player in midfield and also having that mobility and I think defensive security. If Tuchel wants to be a lot more, I think, progressive in his play next year, if he wants to say to go to a 4-3-3 and maybe shake things up at times if Chelsea want to be a lot more daring in games, I think someone like Chiumini could really help on that front. And as well, you're thinking about maybe 40 to 50 million in terms of price, which is a lot lower than what is being quoted for Declan Rice at the moment. And as I say, I think he's the type of player I could see going to Leicester. I definitely just go and watch a lot of Chiumini. I think the, one of the best examples for him in terms of the quality, because I know a lot of people always bring up, you know, the French League, the quality of the French League compared to the Premier League. I think Mendy's proven that that isn't always the case. There isn't a tax as, as is uh, re referred to on social media all the time. You know, they're just the case that you're a quality player and you can transfer those skills over to the Premier League. Um, but I think too many of his performances in both games against PSG, but in particular Monaco's 2-0 win away at PSG, I think back in February was really, really good and I think showed you his his all-round game, especially in a double 6-2 and what he could bring to Chelsea. So too many I think is a really exciting young player and I'd be very happy to see him come to Stamford Bridge this summer. Let's talk about some other transfers uh, briefly. Uh, Raphael Varane uh, apparently is still Thomas Tuchel's number one target. I have seen a lot of reports 
though that uh, Rafa Varane it looks more likely he could be going to Manchester United this summer. I think that centre back, um, and this comes to Kunde as well uh, from Sevilla, who's been linked to Chelsea for months. And I think with both of these names, any centre back link, I, I keep on coming back to this. I think someone has to go uh, for us to bring in a new centre back. I think someone would have to make way. I've consistently said on this channel, I think Kurt Azuma would be the one name simply because he's not got that amount of time for Thomas Tuchel on the pitch. But, you know, if he were to bring in Varane or someone else on top of the current centre backs, maybe Mark Gurhi would have to look elsewhere, you know, potentially another loan move for him over a season so he can get consistent minutes. I still expect Rudiger to sign a new contract. I expect Andreas Christensen, who I think deserves a new contract, uh, will be staying for another season. But unless something radical happens in that area in the coming weeks, now Euro 2020, you know, we're, we're getting to the final stages of that and we know Antonio Rudiger is now out of the competition. Another area that I think has been slightly forgotten by all of us this summer in terms of priority is a potential backup goalkeeper um, because of course Edward Mendy is going to the African Cup of Nations um, in about January February time and there still is that concern over a Kepa Ariza Balaga I know he had some decent performances for Thomas Tuchel um, but we, of course Willy Caballero has, has left the club now are we going to promote from within in that third choice base or are we going to go out in the transfer market and potentially could Kepa still go out on loan this summer I think it will be a loan no one I think he's going to buy him permanently uh, with his wages and uh, Sam Johnston has been brought up by uh, reference by Simon Phillips here um, identified West Brom Jabin keeper as a potential backup to Edward Mendy. The England international only has one year left on his current contract with West Brom. Chelsea see this as a potential opportunity to get a good deal. However, Sam Johnston wants to be number one keeper and not as a number two, as he wants to have strong chances of maintaining his England spot in the squad. Chelsea are trying to convince him by using the factor of Mendy being at AFCON in January, which would see Chelsea's number one miss a handful of games. So I absolutely get that, and I think that is maybe a concern for me. Um, you know, I don't really want to, you know, pile in on Kepa Ariza Balaga. As I say, I think he had a few decent performances, but I think, you know, the reality is, you know, I, I don't think I'm being unfair here when I, I, I look at just the, the raw numbers of Kepa when he got a consistent run of games in 1920 and the struggles he's had at Chelsea. Um, I still think it's best for him to move on to look for, for somewhere else uh, to get maybe more minutes, potentially, say, at Lazio, who've been linked in recent weeks. And I think Johnston had a really good season for a relegated West Brom side. I think he did. I think he made some really good saves. And it's, it's one one of those really difficult positions um second choice goalkeeper to nail down it is final thing i want to speak about today is matt law was on the london's blue pod always just listening to the london's blue pod not only because they have matt law on on a regular basis who gives great insight in terms of transfers and in terms of insight into what's going on at chelsea but they have some great guests on great podcasts great guys too so in the link below please go and listen to the full podcast with matt law because he speaks about a wide array of issues at chelsea um so please go and check it out one thing just a small thing that he did mention was a dark Traore and the fact that there is definite interest in Adama Traore as Matt Law has been reporting just after the Champions League final if you remember um, apparently 20 to 25 million fee could be uh, for Adama Traore this, this summer which would be an amazing sort of you know for me that'd be like 10 million lower than I'd expect for Adama Traore if Chelsea could get that deal that's not the worst thing as I've always brought up with a number of names as, you know, whether it's centre-back or other positions, and it was the whole discussion when, when I was speaking about Hakimi, I'm still going to stick to the fact that personally, in my opinion, I don't think Adama Traore is going to radically improve what we have. Are we falling into the trap as a club again of, of signing someone who once again, you know, isn't going to radically improve the first team and may not be here for, for that long? But Adama Traore, um, if Tuchel really wants him, I think it, there is a sense that you have to back him. And I think that Tuchel, as good of a coach as he is, and I did bring this up when I was speaking about Hakimi. I did bring this up when I was speaking about, you know, Adama Traore weeks ago. You know, there's intrigue of why he wants to bring this player in. With the knowledge and tactical intelligence of Tuchel, you think that if Tuchel could streamline uh, Adama Traore's game into something a lot more consistent... I think that could be really impactful for Chelsea. My problem is it's still being talked about as an impact player. And once again, I get back to this issue of, you know, impact player. I'm looking at Callum hudson -Odoi. I'm looking at Hakim Ziyech. I'm looking at um, Christian Pulisic in particular. I'm looking at players in our squad for me who could probably do that role um, with a similar num number of minutes, you know, 20, 25 million for a player who's, who could just be an impact player for me. I don't think it's the most necessary signing, but, you know, we'll have to see how this progresses in the coming weeks. But that's really it for, for the transfer news. As I say, it still is a little bit slow at the moment. I think as we get closer to the end of the Euros, I think things will increase. Of course, now the fact that 
we're so close to the players being back at Cobham, you know, pre-season really getting going in the coming weeks. So hopefully incomings and outgoings, hopefully we'll see a lot more movement in that uh, for Chelsea. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you didn't enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, at Chelsea. Have a great day and I'll see you again.